I have here a car cassette player that was new in uh, 1974. On the back of the motor I can just about make out 9th of September 1974 on that label. And if you look at this, there's not a microchip in sight. You open up a modern one, there's plenty of microchips, but not in a thing as old as this. The most remarkable thing about this to me is that it's an auto-reverse unit. The mechanism, as you can see, as with most equipment back then, is very solidly built. Well, like a tank, as Dr. Cassette said about his little Walkman the other day. There's a big solenoid down there that does the direction change. At the moment it won't do both directions because the belt's slipping down there. And uh, yes that is one of those ghastly centrifugal regulator motors. But I think the thing does seem to work alright so if it isn't broken don't fiddle you know. You can see the uh, playback head with its four channels. They have to do this, because uh, normal stereo head has two channels on one side of it, of course. But an auto-reverse head, because the tape stays still and isn't turned over, it merely engages this pin roller, instead of that one, shall we say, has to have four pickup strips. Anyway, let's see what this thing sounds like. I think you'll be pleasantly surprised. There's your tone control under there. The parts are a bit crackly, but, uh, and it was really, to be honest, machines like this that sealed the fate of the 8-track. Because once you had a design that uh, would put up with all the bouncing and vibration and dirt and dust and so on you encounter in a car, uh, the 8-track was doomed pretty well, because of course people had cassette recorders and cassette decks at home. Often by this time very fancy models indeed. The speakers I've used today came from the dump and were made by Bush. So uh, perhaps not everything they make nowadays is rubbish. Uh, perhaps they went through a rubbish period, now they're coming out of it. I'll be generous. But uh, there's a proper woofer with a rubber surround and a proper tweeter. <coughs> I've had it apart and had a look. The only thing was, it's got a sort of silly, trendy front which ended about there. It doesn't really offer any protection much. So I might have to make up something else, I think, to uh, fit on the front if I can. So it would be a shame to damage them. They do sound quite good. As you can hear, the treble response is still okay, so the head must be alright. front is your direction indicator, which is a lamp, it won't be an LED. <laughs> the little label there says made in Japan.
you can hear, this thing is still capable of being bloody loud if it wants to. It may be old, but it's not geriatric. On the back of the casing is something else again. It says on the back, among other things, Pi Model 2253. Um, this is so old it can be 12 volts negative or positive earth. Just to be sure about the loudspeaker impedance, it says not less than uh, 4 ohms per channel. I've used a pair of 8s today. Uh, at the very bottom it's got manufactured in Japan uh, for and on behalf of Pi Limited Cambridge. And I haven't seen that for, well, longer than I care to recall. The supply to run this today isn't coming from the mains, it's coming from solar panels on my shed via a big leisure battery in the conservatory. So I'm doing my bit to be green, I guess. On here you've got your volume is under there and your tone under there. That's your balance, of course. You can press this to change direction as well, as well as the automatic feature doing it. And I will try to get that to work because I'm fairly sure it's only the drive belt on the motor's got a bit tired. And of course, if that's the case, the motor will slip. And, uh, well, it's amazing that it plays at all to me. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the film. Oh, it went ka-chunk there, do you see it? it? It tried to move and it can't. Yeah, that's the belt slipping. Anyway, see you again soon. Bye for now.